In this video, I will be continuing my realistic offseason rebuild series going in order of every team in the real life draft picks. The LA Rams have the number 19 pick, so today we'll be rebuilding them. If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen one of these realistic offseason rebuilds yet, it's basically going more into detail as far as what players they're going to re-sign, what they're going to do in free agency, and what they're going to do in the draft. We'll be using realistic draft classes. Also, I've gone through and manually tried to update the roster to mimic what's happening in real life. That way we can still do the draft and have the realistic draft classes of the real players coming out of college. After all that's done, we'll simulate one full season and see how the team does. The Rams do still have Sean McVay as their head coach. It's been there for a while now, I think since like 2017. And they still have the same offensive coordinator from last season. They did lose Raheem Morris as their defensive coordinator because he got the head coaching job in Atlanta. But they just promoted a guy that's been on the team for like seven years on the defensive side to take over the head coaching spot. So we're still sticking with the same Rams defensive playbook and the same Rams offensive playbook. We're setting it a West Coast zone run, 77% scheme fit on the offensive side. Defensive side is a base 3-4, we're at 91% scheme fit. The newest update on Madden has it as Super Bowl week without the game actually being played, so I did have to force the Chiefs to win against the 49ers, so the score is not accurate, but all the other scores and teams that you see is what really happened in the playoffs. So we're going to be starting this rebuild right after the Super Bowl ends. As you can see, I do have the realistic draft class. We got Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Marvin Harrison Jr., Drake May, and all the other players coming out of college in real life in this draft. I went through and cut players that they cut in real life, re-signed players that they re-signed in real life, and then I also had to trade for some players that they signed in free agency because the team that they were on decided to re-sign them in this Madden simulation. So we got Jonah Jackson, had to trade for him. And right now the computer has him as a center, even though he's a left guard. Well, it looks like we do have a need there, so we might have to end up playing them there. We definitely need to do something at left tackle. And then everyone else that you see is already on the team. I do have an offer going on for Jimmy Garoppolo because he's on free agency right now to be the backup quarterback. Defensively, I had a trade for Darius Williams at cornerback. And then also had a trade for Cameron Curl at the safety position and I did update all the contracts to make them realistic. Also, Aaron Donald retired at defensive tackle so he's no longer on the team as you can see. I took him out of the roster completely. Well, uh, what I did was I just lowered him all the way down to like a 27 overall and then cut him and let him go to free agency after I lowered his contract down to really low. So I'm not exactly sure how to make the contract match up but he's no longer on the team and he will not be seen in this video. As far as free agency goes, we do have offer for Colby Parkinson at tight end. They did sign him in real life to like a three year, $22 million deal. And then they got Jimmy Garoppolo as well. He's only a 63 overall, dude was falling off big time. We have some competition from Tampa Bay surprisingly, but we should still be able to get him. And that's the only two players that we, we don't have the team that are actually on the team in real life. We did end up getting Kobe Parkinson to sign as well as Jimmy Garoppolo. So I'm going to be done with free agency now. I don't know what other moves the Rams are going to make in real life. And I don't want to mess around and sign some players that are available that aren't actually available in real life that already signed with other teams. So one thing about the way that I'm doing this is that all the other teams are not going to have the accurate free agents. But that's the only way that I could do it and still be able to have the, the real life stats coming out and have the real life draft order. That's the most important thing. And then using the realistic draft class. So after free agency, this is what the team is looking like. Offensively, we're actually not looking too bad. Matt Stafford at quarterback. I guess the weakest part is gonna be left tackle Jackson. And we have to go with Jonah Jackson at center. It's better than note boom, I guess. So offensively looking decent. Defensively, this is where we're not looking so great really. But these are players that they re-signed. They wanted to, they re-signed this guy. They re-signed this guy. The defensive line is not looking the greatest. Safety is okay. Cornerback, we definitely need to try to get another cornerback. But I'm done with free agency. I'm going into the draft, so we're gonna see what we can do. Here in the first round, we have pick number 19. I'm gonna draft defensive tackle Jerzon Newton from Illinois. He's 6'2", 304 pounds. He's a run stop and scheme fit. We need help on the defensive line like crazy, especially since Aaron Donald retired. This guy is 21 years old. He has great uh, acceleration, good agility, great change of direction, great jumping, good speed, good strength. B block shed, B power moves, B play rec, C awareness. He's got hidden dead with 89 strength. Second round, I'm going to draft this cornerback, Ennis Rakestraw Jr. from Missouri. He's 5'11", 183 pounds. He's a man-to-man -man scheme fit. We need help at cornerback for sure. He's 23 years old. 
Great acceleration, solid agility, decent change of direction, solid jumping, decent speed, de decent strength. He has a B man coverage and A press, B tackle. I do like that a lot about him, so hopefully he's good enough. He's got hit and dead with 89 speed. Third round, we could definitely use another speed rushing outside linebacker. So I'm going to draft Jonah Ellis from Utah. He's 6'2", 248 pounds. He's a defensive end, but I'll definitely be moving on to outside linebacker. 21 years old, he has great acceleration, good agility, elite change of direction, great jumping with good speed. He does have A finesse moves and B power moves, so I like that a lot. He's got normal dead with 82 speed. Here in the fifth round, we did not have a fourth round pick. I'm going to draft this defensive end, Marcus Harris from Auburn. He's 6'2", 286 pounds, and it says that he's a speed rusher even though he's that big. I think he'll still be good as a defensive end for our 3-4 defense. 23 years old. He has marginal acceleration, poor agility, solid change of direction, good jumping, poor speed. If he's so slow, then how is he a speed rusher? He still has B power moves, B play rec, B tackle, and his finesse moves is at least a C and the potential to be up to an A. He's got normal dead with 83 speed. I mean, 83 strength, 70 speed, my bad. I simulated the rest of the draft. In the first round, we took this defensive tackle, Newton, from Illinois. He's actually a 75 overall, so he's going to be starting for us right away, no doubt. Hidden Dev, 21 years old. He has 89 strength, 78 block sheds, 76 power moves with 60 finesse moves, and 82 tackle. Second round, we took Ennis Rakestraw from Missouri at cornerback. He's a 71 overall. He's 23 years old, he has hit in dev, 89 speed, 76 man coverage with 70 zone coverage. Probably just go ahead and make him a starter right away. He already has a morale boost up to a 73 overall, and he has hit in dev. Third round, we took defensive end Jonah Ellis from Utah. He's definitely going to be getting moved to outside linebacker. He's a 71 overall right now. He only had normal dev, but he has 74 power moves, 78 finesse moves, 82 speed with 86 acceleration and 78 tackle. I'm going to go ahead and move him to outside linebacker and see what he bumps up to he's still just a 71 overall even though he's moved to a linebacker so i mean i guess it's good that he didn't go down the rest of the guys are all like 66 65 68 and if you i don't know if you noticed but every single draft pick is a defensive side besides uh running back in the sixth round all right this is what the starting lineup is looking like for the season we got matt stafford at quarterback 78 overall with no more dev jimmy garoppolo backing him up 63 overall with no more dev kyron williams at running back 84 with star and then the rookie schrader the sixth round pick 68 overall with no more dev as a backup running back cooper cup 85 with star dev number one receiver Buka Nakua, 84, with Superstar Dev, our number two receiver. And then we have 2-2 Atwell as our slot receiver, 75, with normal Dev. Tyler Higby at tight end, 80, with Star. And then Parkinson backing him up. He's a 69, with normal Dev. Haven Stein at right tackle is 84, with Star. Dotson at right guard is 81, with Star. Jonah Jackson's going to be playing center for us. He's a 75, with Star. Avila at left guard is a 75, with Star. And then Jackson at left tackle is a 72, with normal Dev. Defensively, we drafted Newton in the first round. He's going to be starting for us at defensive tackle. He's a 75 with hidden dev as a rookie. And then I moved Turner to defensive end because he's only like 280 pounds. Newton was like 305, so it just made sense for the 3-4 defensive line. Turner's a 79 with star. And then Copeland is the best overall player that we have out of the rest of the guys to play the other defensive end spot. 68 with normal dev. Williams at cornerback is a 84 with star. I'm going to start Rake Straw in the slot. He's a 73 with hidden dev rookie. Kendrick's our number two corner, 74 with normal dev. Cameron Curl at strong safety is 82 with star. Ellis is going to be starting for us right away as a rookie at outside linebacker. He's a 71 with normal dev over Hoked, or however you say this dude's last name. He's a 72, and he's a lot older, so it makes sense to start Ellis. Then we got Jones at middle linebacker, 81 with normal, and then Roseboom, 68 with normal dev. Byron Young, right outside linebacker, 76 overall with normal dev. And then Lake at free safety, he's a 74 with normal dev. Setting the season goal for seven games, honestly don't think that this defense is going to be good enough to make the playoffs. Here at week five, we're currently one in three on the season, not off to a good start. We just got our first win against the Jets, 17 to 14. We got a breakout opportunity for a defensive back here. Let's find out who it's going to be for. It's going to be for Darian Kendrick. Hold the Bills to less than 200 passing yards or get Darian Kendrick one interception for his fumble tackle for loss or sack. We did manage to beat the Bills 25-13. Let's see if we got this dev trade upgrade for this breakout player. 
Yep, we did get it. He's up to star dev and he gets 20,000 XP. Wow. Here at the midseason point, we're 2 and 4, last in the division. The Seahawks are 6 and 1, Cardinals are 4 and 2, 49ers are 3 and 4. Not out to a great start. Let's see what's going on with the season stats midway through. Matthew Stafford, 1,100 yards passing, 9 touchdowns, 3 interceptions, 61% completion with a 92 rating. Not terrible, but it could definitely be a lot better. Kyron Williams, 325 yards, only 3.6 per carry, 2 touchdowns, really not good either. Puka Nakua, 367 yards receiving with 4 touchdowns. Defensively, Ernest Jones leading the team in tackles with 45 sacks. Kobe Turner has 2 and Byron Young has 1 and nobody else has any. That's not good at all. Interceptions, Darius Williams has 2, Jones has 1, Kendrick has 1. Currently at week 15 and we're not going to the playoffs for sure. We are 4 and 9, looking terrible, but we do have a weekly award here. We just beat the Saints and the weekly award is for Kyron Williams. He has 150 rushing yards and one touchdown and he had three catches for 59 yards and another touchdown. Dude had a crazy game. Week 17, we are 4 and 11 and we have a breakout opportunity for a linebacker. So I'm going to go ahead and show that it's going to be for Byron Young. What does he need to do? Hold the 49ers to less than 250 yards or get Byron Young. One interception, forced fumble, tackle for loss, or sack. We just got destroyed by the 49ers 31 to 3. Let's see if we got this breakout opportunity. I doubt it. Oh, he did get it? Okay. So to start Deb, and he got 20,000 XP. Nice. End of the regular season, we finished 4 and 13, last in the division. The Seahawks went 11 and 6, won the division. 49ers went 10 and 7. Cardinals went 7 and 10. Looking at the my team ranks there, offensive points per game, we were 32nd in the league with 14.6. That is terrible. Defensive points per game, 30th, so we gave up 25 points per game. Team was just bad all around. Let's look at the season stats here. Matthew Stafford, 3,400 yards passing, 18 touchdowns, 17 interceptions, 58% completion with a 76 rating. Not good, buddy. Time for you to retire. Kyron Williams, 1,085 yards, 4.6 per carry with five touchdowns. Pretty good season from him. He had a bad first start or first half of the season, but he did pretty good, I guess, the second half. Puka Nakua, 87 catches, 1,094 yards, five touchdowns. 2-2 two -two Atwell, 750 yards, 3 touchdowns. Cooper Cup, 700 yards, 5 touchdowns. Tyler Higby, 500 yards with 1 touchdown at tight end. Defensively, Ernest Jones had a crap load of tackles, 151, probably because we were on defense like the whole time. Rose Boom had 106 tackles, second most on the team. Newton, the rookie defensive tackle, led the team in tackles for loss with 20. Turner had 16, Copeland had 13, and Byron Young had 12. Sacks, Byron Young had eight and a half, led the team. Kobe Turner had four, Newton had three, Ellis had two. Interceptions, Darius Williams had three, Curl had two, and then we have a bunch of guys of one, including Ellis, Ernest Jones, Rose Boom, Kendrick, Lake, and Michael Ohemudia. I'm not sure how to say his last name. The Cowboys beat the Raiders in the Super Bowl 24 to 19. Demarcus Lawrence won Super Bowl MVP. Patrick Mahomes won MVP of the regular season with the Chiefs. Mike McCarthy won Coach of the Year with the Cowboys. Patrick Mahomes also won Offensive Player of the Year with the Chiefs. Micah Parsons won Defensive Player of the Year with the Cowboys. Caleb Williams won Offensive Rookie of the Year with the Commanders. And Jared Verse won Defensive Rookie of the Year with the Cardinals. This is what the final team is looking like. There's a bunch of negative morale things dragging people down here. Negative two, negative three. Look at Matt Stafford. He's got a negative three. He's at a 69 overall. Obviously, the Rams could have a way better season in real life because, you know, this is a video game. But also, there's a bunch of players that are still available in free agency. There's trades that can happen. The Rams are really good at drafting uh, players, like, deep in the draft, like fifth, sixth round. Kyron Williams, I think he was a fifth round pick, and the dude is a beast at running back. I think it was the same thing with Byron Young on the defense. I think he was like a fifth round pick too. But this is what the team is looking like. Kyra Williams, 85 star. Cooper Cups, at 80 with star. Puka Nakua, 83 with superstar. At Wills, a 74 with normal. Jackson, 71 with normal. Avila, 75 with star. Jackson at center, 73. He went down to normal dev. Dotson's at 80 with star. Haven signs at 80 with star. Higby's a 75 with star. Defensively, Newton is a 75 with star, Copeland 66 normal, Turner is a 78 with star, Williams is 83 with star, 
Rake Straw had star dev. He's a 76. He actually has a plus two morale boost instead of negative like everyone else. Kendrick's a 77. He did get started in the middle of the season. Curl's a 81 with star. Ellis is a 72 with normal. Jones is up to star dev. He was a normal dev. He's 81. Rosebloom's a 70 with normal. Byron Young's up to star dev. He's a 76. And then Lake is a 73 with normal dev. I was going to say I'm surprised that Matthew Stafford didn't retire. But I see right here why he's going to get $50 million in 2025 and then $49.5 million in 2026. That's going to be it for the video. If you can, please do me a favor and help support the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Say something down in the comments. I appreciate y'all for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.